So the big question, what's it going to be like? For more insight into all things Black Friday, let's bring in Carol Speakerman. She's the president of Speakerman Retail, joining us now for the program. Carol, pleasure to see you. Hope you're doing well on this Black Friday. So get to <laughs> it. How are people expected to spend Black Friday, Cyber Monday, compared to last year? Well, it's great to be with you. Well, the sales predictions are all over the place this year. You'll hear that there are single-digit increases, double-digit increases uh, for both uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But the fact is, you know, we, talk, we call these events, but that's a bit of a misnomer because what they've really turned into is multi-day and in some cases, um, you know, week-long or multi-week uh, promotional marathons. So it really mm. is more about having a cumulative effect. And that's the real story. And I don't think we're going to know the end of the story until the end of the year, particularly because shoppers are waiting it out. And, you know, you could say that shoppers are showing a lot of restraint that retailers aren't because retailers are slashing prices right and left in an effort to get through that inventory and, of course, drive sales um, going into, you know, the end of the year. But I think, too, Given all of the headwinds that retailers are facing this year in particular, you can't expect every year to have these, these double-digit right. increases year over year. Um, you know, everything from inflation on the consumer side to these inventory pileups, not to mention the fact that some of these major retailers are reporting in their third quarter reports um, a big slowdown in uh, the discretionary categories that drive profitability. And on top of that, you have this dramatic increase and retail theft and organized crime uh, that Target put a number on, $400 million wow. in lost sales in the last quarter. So it's there's a lot, of, a lot of mitigating factors to where even if the sales numbers overall increase, right. profitability may, may be hard to come by. Let's throw another wrench in the works as well, because it's been difficult for people, not only in the U.S., for everywhere, to get out in the winter and do shopping. So uh, if Owen Faircliffe, our first reporter uh, tonight, was right, a lot of foot traffic for this Black Friday, which kind of throws to years past, and maybe people holding off on Cyber Monday because they just want to get outside. Do you think that is part of this equation? Yeah, I do. I think there's a lot of pent-up demand, uh, both weather-related and otherwise, where uh, folks are wanting to, wanting to shop in stores. But retailers know that that multi-channel shopper that shops online and in-store is their most valuable shopper because they tend to flex those options and get it all done with one mm. retailer. So that's the end game this year is to get shoppers buying and checking more off of their list, whether they're buying online or in stores, and to not jump off a particular retailer's platform and go someplace else. And what about small business and also those shops that uh, kindly advertise shop local? How are those businesses expected to, uh, to do this year? Well, you, again, you hear varying predictions on it, but I think small businesses in this environment have a real um, advantage because there has been a little bit of a backlash against some of what these big retailers are doing, not only cutting back on labor within stores and running their stores with skeleton crews, but also bringing in automation. And not all shoppers like that DIY shopping experience. So um, I think that that is in favor of small businesses, not to mention, you know, what you mentioned a second ago, um, just that need for interaction and that that longing in some cases for that personal touch mm. that small businesses can bring and ideally unique items that they can't find in those big box stores. So I think small businesses have a lot going for them, particularly this year for a reason that doesn't get talked about a lot. And that is that there are a lot of solution providers now that are catering to small businesses and helping them up their game and compete better with these bigger retailers, whether that's pricing tools, advanced analytics, and so on. So the small businesses that are availing themselves of these new options and right. not trying to do everything themselves, I think will find themselves in a, in a good position. you got to step up your game, especially during a holiday <laughs> shopping. Uh, Carol, let's talk about inflation. We touched upon it earlier, but our market reporter, uh, John Terrett, did point out that uh, some of the big retailers had very good numbers today. What can you glean from this? Well, inflation I, on a global scale may not be seeming to be, you know, mitigated, but um, there are some positive. There, there are some positive signs, and as always, I think what retailers have been having to get their heads around is that shoppers are still buying, but it's what they're buying, and they're changing um, category preferences and and those types of things that are making it sort of a moving target and very difficult for retailers to predict. 
So they are seeing upticks in sales of grocery and a lot of these low-margin categories, but the tough nut to crack is converting right. those shoppers to those higher-margin categories that really uh, move the needle in their profitability. Uh, Carol Speakerman, thanks so much. And a word of warning, don't run up those credit card bills. Those interest rates are out there. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. You bet.